This conference will now be recorded. Hi everyone. Good evening. Good morning. So we will give a couple of minutes for others to join. Uh, we'll wait for some time and then we'll start our demo session. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we'll get started. Uh, once again, uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to Isha Training Solutions. So I'll quickly uh, uh, launch our course content. So in our previous session, uh, I covered what are all the course content that we are going to learn as part of the AppDynamic APM tool. So today what we will do, we will start our learning. Okay, from the day one, the topic uh, introduction level, we will start our learning because uh, we have to set the context okay we have to set the context because right now the context is actually missing from most of us if i ask you the question like maybe in this forum itself if i ask you the question uh, what is uh, i mean uh, app dynamics means what have you ever heard about those things like that if i ask the question most of us will not uh, clearly cover the core capability of uh, uh, app dynamics tool itself okay so can anybody uh, summarize like uh, uh, what is uh, uh, app dynamics tool? What for it is actually used like that? Anybody can summarize, please. Yeah, so it's a, a application monitoring tool which can monitor uh, application level, infrastructure level, as well as DB level, all the monitoring things. So you, yeah, very good. Uh, you pretty much uh, covered that. So right now, uh, I mean, uh, uh, yes, you are aware of the APM tool, but right now, if I ask the question to each and everybody, sometimes, uh, um, I mean, we are not getting the actual uh, uh, response because because their, their uh, primary focus is on um, PT tools only, okay, performance testing tools only, their, their primary focus okay but i would say uh, equally important okay not only performance testing tool level apm tool level if you are uh, aware of it equally it is important that is what i would uh, uh, recommend okay because if i if i go through any uh, uh, any uh, interview job descriptions you know definitely nowadays one apm tool is there in the list because the expectation is like that okay the expectation is not only performance testing tool level, you try to focus on the uh, uh, APM tool level also. So that is the reason we are here. We we gathered here to, to start our learning in the APM tool side. Okay. So specifically, App Dynamics tool. So right now, what are APM tools? APM application performance performance monitoring or management application performance monitoring or application performance management 
why i am saying management also why i am saying management also so uh, because monitoring tool only does the monitoring activity it will provide only the number it will only provide the number it will only say like response time this much error this much exception this much cpu utilization this much memory utilization this much so so now management means what management means with the data are we getting any managing activity alerting activity notification activity some kind of a management activity done by the tool or what yes yes now your app dynamics tool is having the capability to do the managing activity what is that is giving you the email notification sms notification like that it is also providing you some kind of a notification as well some kind of a notification also it is actually providing it is also providing so that's the reason i'm saying it is not only application performance monitoring it is also providing application performance management performance management right from each and every stack you consider okay browser application server database server infrastructure every layer you are going to do the monitoring that is the best benefit of this apm full stack full stack monitoring full stack monitoring means what covering all the layers browser layer app layer db layer infrastructure layer every layer you are covering so full stack full stack monitoring you are trying to do it using this apm tool okay you can ask me this question sir why sir this tool alone is actually getting the famous uh, name why not other tools other tools yes it is used for individual level of data gathering db profiling tool for db app profiling tool for application client side monitoring tool for browser infrastructure monitoring tool for infrastructure like that individual tools for individual activities those days those days i mean to say like 7 years 8 years 9 years before and all we used to have different different tools for different different activities that we are performing but now it's not the case it's single solution single tool for all your problem statement single tool for all your problem statement nowadays okay single tool for all your problem statement because you think like this you think from a customer perspective you think from a customer perspective i have to monitor my application so will i uh, recruit a person who knows apm tool or i will recruit one person for db monitoring one person for app monitoring one person for infrastructure monitoring one person for client side monitoring like that will i recruit a person like that or like this so obviously my choice will be the person who knows apm tool because all in one everything can be done in the single tool itself right so that's the reason apm tool is becoming very 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 famous because the functionality is like that the functionality is like that okay but in the in the other cases you need to have individual tools for individual activity which is not that easy to do so okay say like you think like this i mean you have your browser you have your say like application server you have your db server so all these are available so i have to do monitoring through the apm tool through the apm tool irrespective of any tool okay any tool not only app dynamics i'm saying like any apm tool what they are doing they are installing a piece of software called agents agents okay so they are configuring the piece of agent called agents so what this agent will do it will diagnose and then monitor what are all the things that are happening in browser app server db server everywhere and it will collect the data and it will collect the data so what it is actually doing it is collecting the data from browser it is collecting the data from app server it is collecting the data from db server and it is sending the data to where your app dynamics ui it is sending the data to app dynamics ui 
the data is actually coming from agent to ui so it is actually your app dynamics your app dynamics it may be saas based or it may be on premises based but but the functionality is same what it is actually doing it is collecting the data from browser it is collecting the data from app server it is collecting the data from db server when it is actually sending the data to your app dynamics instance it is sending the data to your app dynamics instance so you think like this browser so till now whatever i covered is actually the generic understanding now you focus on app dynamics now you focus on app dynamics so in app dynamics what is actually happening browser user experience agent application server app agent database server db agent infrastructure level monitoring server agent like that you have different different agents that are available you have different different agents that are available browser user experience agent application server application agent database server db agent infrastructure monitoring server agent like that you have different different agents that are available to do the monitoring so i mean i mentioned a little high level right application agent means uh, java agent is there .net agent is there node js agent is there python agent is there like that you have different different app agent is there similar to db agent means you may be having mysql mongo postgres like that you have different different db agents that are there infrastructure monitoring means windows level agent is there linux level agent is there so like that you have different different flavor of agents that are available in app dynamics so based on your application technology stack you can do the monitoring you can do the monitoring i'll take a pass here guys any question till now yeah uh, sarvana hi uh, how are the agents connecting to the controller could you tell us about the controller installation probably yeah how does so, that connection work yeah so uh, controller installation is happening in the on premises mode of uh, installation okay pratik uh, so so on, on premises what is actually happening there is a component called enterprise console there is a software called enterprise console Okay. okay so since i am going to install in pratik's machine means i am going to install that enterprise console in pratik's machine saying like that is one one server okay so i am installing it okay once i am done with the installing i mean the end of the installation what will happen there will be a url generated there will be a url generated which is actually called as enterprise console url okay that url if you are launching inside the url you are having the provision to install controller event services okay controller okay. and event services so you can install controller you can install the event services after the successful installation of the controller and the event services i mean i am saying generally it is actually controller and event services begin the screen all the required db all those things are actually installed okay once you are completing that installation you will be having a url controller url will be generated that url you are going to launch it in the browser going forward what you have to do you have to launch the enterprise console url and then start the service of controller and then launch the url of controller and then we can use it that's how it is working pratik okay. okay all right got it yeah so so now i gave you the high level picture of now i gave you the high level picture of uh, how uh, Uh, the agents that are configured agents that are sending the data uh, all those things we uh, discussed okay so this is actually i mean yes it is suitable for all other apm tools also but in specific to app dynamics yes it is working in this fashion it is working in this fashion different different agents are there actually saying uh, i mean definitely people will expect like uh, in what way it is actually different from uh, uh, dynatrace and app dynamics this question i think everybody is asking so so i am telling it up front in dynatrace there also the agents are installed only i mean there also browser level agents configuration or app server level agent configuration or db server level agent configuration everything is there but it's all done in the name of one agent it's all done in the name of one agent the name itself one agent okay 
but here it is not like that here i told you right user experience agent java agent .net agent node js agent python agent windows agent linux agent mysql agent mongo agent so all these are different different flavors based on your technology stack you can purchase the agent types also here okay so there it is all one agent here it is all different different technology different different agents that are configured that's the difference between your app dynamics and dynatrace but functionally it is same i mean agents are installed data is actually collected that is actually common that is actually common but the difference is this one only clear everybody clear yes sir no. yeah so i'll quickly uh, uh, come back to our actual discussion so uh, apm tools means now i told you application performance monitoring or application performance management because uh, um, i mean nowadays the uh, the importance is growing like anything because one tool is actually sufficient to do all kind of investigation means so that is the reason everybody's uh, uh, interest is moving towards apm tool because your load testing tool is not providing that number so apm tool is actually providing a detailed information so everybody is actually moving towards the apm tool okay if you think like i mean uh, this question i usually ask to everybody so so your load testing tool is actually saying your search transaction is actually taking 15 seconds your search transaction is actually taking 15 seconds so if i ask you the question 15 seconds search transaction is it actually sufficient for the end user i mean uh, i mean your developers and uh, customers they they are they are okay with this information if you are providing search transaction is actually taking 15 seconds no right it is not at all sufficient because you need to tell them something related to method call or class level or some more detailed information which layer is it a db call is it a app call is it a browser call in browser call what what information like that you, you need to provide little more detailed information you don't want to provide a, like a high level uh, data you have to provide a detailed information that is actually very important actually saying your performance testing tool cannot provide that your performance testing tool cannot provide that kind of a detailed information it can only provide a http layer level http your your tool can provide http layer level it will only provide server level response time not the user level response time because your tool is not having the capability everybody accepting or anybody counter dialogue uh, this this uh, st the statement performance testing tool cannot provide browser level data true or not true true yeah so so your http protocol cannot provide browser level response time it's actually only providing http level response time server level response time server level any question in this guys uh, so that uh, i'll move to the next or if you are having any doubt i'll i'll explain in little more uh, detailed way a performance testing tool cannot provide browser level time everybody is accepting right yes anybody wants little explanation no oh so yes it is uh, then it is universally accepted that uh, uh, performance testing tool is uh, not providing your browser level response time okay because it is hitting the uh, http traffic only it is not hitting your user level traffic your uh, your front end level data is not uh, uh, handled by your uh, load testing tool because load testing tool is having the capability to communicate through the http layer transport layer it is not communicating in the your your front end layer okay user user layer it is not actually communicating it is not communicating at all okay then why apm tools are important just now i mentioned just now i mentioned it is important because everybody can use it it is important everybody can use it who are all can use it developer performance tester performance engineer 
performance engineer, system support engineer. System support engineer. So developer, yes, developer can use this tool if they wanted to do a unit testing. I mean, they can deploy their code in the machine where the app dynamics already configured. In that machine, if they are doing the deployment, they can do the unit testing in a detailed way. They can do a unit testing in a detailed way. Okay. So right now the problem is developers are not performing the detailed uh, unit testing. They are simply deploying the code in the box. And because of that, some unwanted issues that are coming. But if they are doing a detailed unit testing, they can uh, uh, they can um, uh, somehow handle uh, some of the uh, key issues. Okay. So so they wanted to do a very detailed level of uh, um, a very detailed level of uh, uh, unit testing. Then only they can avoid certain problems. They can avoid certain problems. Okay, so unit testing in the environment where your app dynamics is already running, you can do it. But uh, but uh, it's up to the uh, developers because sometimes they will not do all those things. They will straight away deploy the code to the integration tester. So next one is performance tester. Everybody knows APM tools are predominantly used by performance testers only. APM tools are predominantly used by performance testers only because they wanted to provide end-to-end -end information. They can provide a tool level metric. They can provide a client side level metric. They can provide infrastructure level metric. They can provide database level metric. Yes, performance testers can use this tool to a detailed level so that they can pinpoint the actual problem. If they are only providing the performance testing numbers, that is not right. So they can provide something related to the client side, something related to DP side, something related to infrastructure side, along with the performance setting numbers. So that the end user will get the positive feel, yes, I have a complete number, including all the layer uh, data. So performance testers can use this in a different, different uh, uh, perspective. They can use it for, I mean, they can use it for client side monitoring. That is very, very important. Very, very important. They can use it for client side monitoring. And also, they can use it for uh, infrastructure monitoring. Right now, I'll, I'll, I'll ask this question in this forum. How many of you are currently doing infrastructure monitoring? My team is doing it, not everybody has the access. So that's something. Pagata, your voice is very, very low. Can you talk a little louder? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, my team currently have Dynatris enabled uh, uh, plugin using JMeter, but uh, that access we all of us don't have. Yeah, yeah. So Good that's reply. the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good reply. Because that is what even I'm saying. Nowadays, we are not getting the access. Okay, what people are saying, there is a separate team available. Okay, so they are not giving the complete yeah. control, right? So, so that problem is still there with us. Okay. So, so problem, problem. What is that access problem? So if you are using this kind of APM tool, at least you can get some kind of an access. Okay. I mean, anyways, they are not going to give the complete access, but at least you can try to see instead of, I mean, every organization will have an infrastructure monitoring tool, right? But if you if you are using this APM tool, at least you have some option to do the infrastructure monitoring. Instead of uh, uh, getting the infrastructure monitoring tool, you can use this APM tool so that one, one module, if you are getting the access, at least you can do some level of infrastructure monitoring using the APM tool. Right, yeah. Yeah. So that is the reason performance testers are very, uh, I mean, the apt person to use this APM tool because they are using it in the different, different ways. They can use infrastructure monitoring level, uh, DB monitoring level, app monitoring level, cloud uh, client side monitoring level like that. They can use it for different different activities. Similarly, performance engineers also. Performance engineers also using this tool in a different way because if you think like 
what performance engineers are actually intended to do performance engineers are actually doing uh, capacity planning or production analysis or predictive analysis like that lot of activities they are doing it in the production right so performance engineers also use this tool in a in a different different activities they can do for capacity planning or uh, production monitoring or they can do some log analysis or some root cause analysis for different different activities they can use the apm tool. they can use the apm tool for different different activities okay and then system support engineers system support engineers so what is happening i mean uh, if you see traditional uh, approach you know system support engineers what they will do if there is any problem in the system they will identify it they will report to the con uh, concern team they will fix the issue they will redeploy the code again they will monitor the system like that they used to do lot of things those days but now the job is little easy why these apm tools are actually having a notification capability notification okay when the threshold is actually met you know it will do the notification so it may be either a mail notification or sms notification through the notification the system support engineer can identify what is the problem or or at least where the problem and then they can cascade the information to subsequent team it may be ui team app team db team infra team whatever the team they will cascade the information to the respective team and the respective team will fix the issue and then resolve the so now the problem identification is little easy through the apm tool okay you can set the configuration you can set it like cpu should not go beyond certain certain uh, range memory should not go beyond certain range like that you can set the threshold okay now that is the advantage right you you can set the threshold uh, 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 i mean there is a health rule in in app in app dynamics the word is actually health rule health rule violation happening or what i mean your health rule there is a value and you are violating that number or what that is what you are checking it in the health rule violation and also there is one more concept called anomaly detection anomaly detection so through this uh, health rule violation or anomaly detection you can uh, uh, check the metric is it, it is going beyond the value or what and then you can notify the respective team okay so system support engineers job is little easy nowadays because it is all automated all these things are automated where there is a problem you are going to get the proactive notification so before even the actual problem is actually happening you will get the notification mm -hmm. from that notification you can try to uh, avoid the problem to happen okay that that particular cpu problem or memory problem you can proactively identify the root cause and then try to resolve the problem so that kind of a feature and all available in the app dynamics apm tool so so it can be used by the developer it can be used by the performance sister it can be used by the performance engineer and then system support engineer based on the activity that they are performing each and every role they are performing different different activity in that what level of information that we are going to get it in the apm tool of app dynamics we are we are going to learn this we are going to learn now i'll take a pass here any question guys till now anybody have any question uh hi this is megha here hello yes megha i uh, had a general question apart from this agent between app dynamics and dynatris uh, are there any um, advantages from one tool to another tool apart from functionalities which one you are saying which one between app dynamics and dynatris see see both are leading tool in the market okay both are doing the similar kind of a monitoring i mean um, uh, app level db level infra level browser level both are doing okay and now in the recent trend i'm saying dynatrace is actually uh, showing their bi weekly uh, releases so because of that what they are doing they are trying to do some kind of um, artificial intelligence or some kind of a devops or big data related features they are trying to bring in small small things they are trying to bring in okay their age old uh, uh, concept called pure path they changed it to distributed trace in the recent edition okay in in dynatrace their age old strategy called pure path 
that name they change it to distributed traces nowadays so so they are trying to do a little name change or functionality change or trying to penetrate some devops related or big data related things they are trying to bring in in dynamics so similarly app dynamics is also doing but not that frequently because uh, dynamics is actually bi weekly they are doing some kind of a changes okay so here also they are doing not that um, not the way that uh, dynamics is actually doing okay but functionality perspective here uh, they are calling that as a call graph okay in 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 app dynamics they are calling that as a call graph in uh, dynamics they are calling that as a smart scape topology okay sorry sorry uh, here in app dynamics it's actually called as flow map in dynamics it's actually called as smart scape in app dynamics it's actually called as call graph in dynamics they are calling that as a pure path now it is actually changed to distributed traces so why i am saying every capability available in app dynamics similar capability available in dynamics as well okay maybe if i wanted to differentiate the baseline capability available in app dynamics is not available in uh, uh, dynamics baseline okay and uh, similar thing i would say now in dynamics they they added uh, something like metrics they added something like security like that they added certain new feature which is not available in app dynamics so but other than that the core capability i mean application performance monitoring core capability is there right both are working in the similar fashion okay okay thank you so much yeah sure so and one more question sorry for interrupting Yeah. Uh, when we see the response time from JMeter or any testing tool versus uh, app from the app side, uh, we see from JMeter and little bit more compared to the app side. So that includes only the network. No, no, sorry. Uh, can you repeat my question one more time? You are which is actually which is actually increased, which is actually less. From JMeter and we see more response time compared to the App servers. App server means physical server. Physical, yes. Okay. Uh, when we run a test for one hour, and mm -hmm. if we fetch the response time from uh, any testing tool, mm -hmm. uh, it will be little more compared to the physical servers. How you measured in physical servers? Uh, by open source like Kibana. Uh mm huh. -hmm. so uh, we can configure like uh, if uh, if you want to get the response time from any particular server we can add that node in the kibana and we can from the duration um, of testing period we can fetch the response time yeah so obvious so it obvious. will be bit vary yeah so it definitely. includes only the network no it's not like that it's a it's a calculation engine okay calculation engine i mean the way you are calculating in kibana the way you are calculating in jmeter would not be same it will not be same okay so if you go and uh, uh, analyze the jmeter uh, report i mean the jtl report or or the csv report you know the way they are doing the average the way they are doing min max value all those things are actually uh, uh, pertaining to jmeter alone okay because it's open source forum they are maintaining their own logic in doing the calculation even even i am saying you cannot bring the common uniform behavior between transaction controller recording controller simple controller all those even individual controller itself you cannot bring the common number i don't know whether you validated i validated that's the reason i'm saying you cannot bring the common uh, common uh, behavior between that so the calculation engine is actually different from answer to your question the calculation engine is actually different from okay. jmeter kibana you cannot expect the same only thing may be is there an option available to integrate these tools and then try to find the numbers that may be the only option but other than that individually if you validate it it will be definitely different because say in jmeter i'm saying throwing an example jmeter it is actually calculating 1 2 3 4 all the four samplers it is actually calculating means in kibana it may be missing one component it is adding it to the other transaction or other request itself so you cannot you cannot say it is all apple to apple whatever is actually happening in jmeter only you are doing it in kibana or what you cannot confirm that in in jmeter it may be four request in kibana it may be three request who knows 
if you have the proper concrete information only you can compare the both the numbers but right now we don't have the concrete information means we cannot compare it clear mega okay yes got it yeah thank you sure mega so i mean uh, uh, those who wanted to uh, enroll for this session guys okay enroll for this session this is the number okay i'll paste it in the chat please take it uh, this is uh, kumar sir number okay i'll paste it in the chat kumar sir number so 801995242780199952427 801995242427 is kumar sir number okay you can reach out to kumar sir for any further information i mean course content course timing when the course will happen or anything related to the uh, course training you can uh, reach out to kumar sir 801995242427 i am copy pasting this url in the chat as well because this is a course content that we are going to cover as part of the learning already we started the session for, for everybody's information we we started the session what we are going to do we are going to learn this tool in a detailed way right from configuration right from agent configuration dashboard creation report creation anomaly detection every bit of information we are going to cover it along with the interview preparation along with the interview preparation real world example hands on experience everything we are going to do in this course journey guys i am going to give you two sample application you are going to configure those two configuration uh, application configuration in your machine and we are going to do two application agent two database agent two infrastructure agent one user experience agent like that different different variety of configuration that we are going to do and also dashboard creation report creation and uh, alerts and response all those critical feature also we are going to learn so all these things are practical oriented real world example we are going to share it along with the interview preparation question as well okay this this is actually going to happen in this time slot 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock 8 pm to 9 pm indian time 8 pm to 9 pm indian time correspondingly in other locations correspondingly in other location we are going to have this session and this session is going to be three days a week three days i mean monday wednesday friday monday wednesday friday three days a week we are going to have this session in a week we are going to have monday wednesday and friday remaining days holidays so we are going to have it in that approach okay so uh, all these videos are actually recorded all these sessions are actually recorded i am going to share the videos in the youtube playlist url every day we will upload the video i mean not every day when the session completes we are going to upload the video and uh, you are going to have those video for lifetime access any time say like you are missing any session you wanted to check the video after the session means you can even watch the video and then you can bring the question so that option is also available and all the artifacts supporting documents and everything we are going to share through google drive we are going to share through google drive through the google drive we are going to share it you can download and then you can make use of it so those who wanted to enroll for this course journey please reach out to kumar sir 801995242427 already we started the session actually saying we started the session uh, uh, so don't want to miss any concepts don't want to miss any individual topic please reach out to kumar sir for any further information uh, uh, thanks for the learners who joined today for evaluating us thanks everyone for giving me this opportunity to share my knowledge and experience with you people we are going to continue the same we are going to continue the same same learning along with the hands on experience along with the interview preparation things everything we are going to do guys okay so with this we'll complete our session for today we will regroup uh, day after tomorrow for our further understanding thanks for joining and have a nice day bye bye thank you thank you